How to Pray by R.A. Torrey, Chapter 6, being read by Peter John Parisi, also known as Brian Dean. Always praying and not fainting. In two parables in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus teaches with great emphasis the lesson that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The first parable is found in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 8, and the other in Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. Quote, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Unquote. Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 8. Quote, and he spoke a parable unto them, to this end, that men always ought to pray, and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feareth not God, neither regardeth man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, but because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with him? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Unquote. Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. In the former of these two parables, Jesus sets forth the necessity of importunate in prayer in a startling way. The word rendered, quote, importunity, unquote, means literally, quote, shamelessness, unquote. As if Jesus would have us understand that God would have us draw nigh to him with the determination to obtain the things we seek that will not be put to shame by any seeming refusal or delay on God's part. God delights in the holy boldness that will not take no for an answer. It is an expression of great faith, and nothing pleases God more than faith. Jesus seemed to put the Syrophoenician woman away, almost with rudeness, but she would not be put away, and Jesus looked upon her shameless importunity with pleasure and said, quote, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt, unquote. Matthew 15, verse 28. God's, God does not always let us get things at our first effort. He would train us and make us strong men by compelling us to work hard for the best things. So also he does not always give us what we ask in answer to the first prayer. He would train us and make us strong men of prayer by compelling us to pray hard for the best things. He makes us pray through. I am glad that this is so. There is no more blessed training in prayer than that that comes through being compelled to ask again and again and again, even through a long period of years before one attains that which he seeks from God. Many people call it submission to the will of God when God does not grant them their request at the first or second asking. And they say, quote, well, Perhaps it's not God's will, unquote. As a rule, this is not submission, but spiritual laziness. We do not call it submission to the will of God when we give up after one or two efforts to obtain things by action. We call it lack of strength of character. When the strong man of action starts out to accomplish a thing, if he does not accomplish it the first or second or 100th time, he keeps hammering away until he does accomplish it. And the strong man of prayer, when he starts to pray, for a thing, keeps on praying until he prays it through and obtains what he seeks. We should be careful about what we ask from God, but when we do begin to pray for a thing, we should never give up praying for it until we get it or until God makes it very clear and very definite to us that it is not his will to give it. Some would have us believe that it shows unbelief to pray twice for the same thing that we ought to take it the first time that we ask. Doubtless, there are times when we are able, through faith, in the Word or the leading of the Holy Spirit, to claim the first time that which we have asked of God. But beyond question, there are other times when we must pray again 
and again and again for the same thing before we get our answer. Those who have gotten beyond praying twice for the same thing have gotten beyond their master. Matthew 26, verse 44. George Mueller prayed for two men daily for upwards of 60 years. One of these men was converted shortly before his death. I think at the last service that George Mueller held. The other was converted within a year after his death. One of the great needs of the present day is men and women who will not only pray out and start out to pray for things, but pray on and on and on until they obtain that which they seek from the Lord.